cell phones, iPads, iPod Nanos! Yeah, remember those things? They're all pretty cool devices. You can do loads of fun things on them. And one of those things is play video games. So one day, Nintendo was like, wait a minute, we got an untapped market here. They then had a meeting and busted out the charts and said, okay, look here, maybe not everyone in the entire world has a 3DS, but a lot more people definitely have cell phones. Heck, even grandma's over there playing Angry Birds for hours. And thus led to the creation of first party mobile games made by Nintendo. Are they any good? Well, I guess we're gonna find out. First game we're gonna talk about is a little title called Mitomo. Yeah, this was, uh... I don't even really know what this was exactly, to be honest. Was it a social media experience? A game? A fever dream I had? Was Mitomo even real? So let's back up a bit. Mitomo was a free app. Nintendo's first, actually, that you could download on your phone back in March 2016. You'd create your own me and converse with users all over the world, making new friends by answering fun little questions. A big feature of the game was customizing your me and its bedroom. You could dress them up in funny costumes to take pictures of and send to your friends. So, Facebook, or Instagram, or whatever you kids are doing nowadays. There were loads of fun mini-games and special events where you could earn limited time items and equipment, giving you incentive to check the game every day. I didn't play Mitomo too much, to be honest. But what little I did, I found lots of charm and innocence to it. Keep in mind, I was 21 when the game first came out, and still had that same joy I had when I was 13 and played the Nintendo Wii for the first time. Creating my me, designing him... I don't know how Nintendo does it, but they always manage to re ignite that childlike wonder in me with the simplest of experiences. Since this was Nintendo's first mobile app, there was a lot of hype behind it, and it paid off. It was a critical and commercial success. However, despite that success, the game was discontinued in May 2018. A survey was done and it turned out that only 25% of the people who downloaded the game opened the app regularly as the years went on being used half as much as Candy Crush Saga. Damn you, Candy Crush, you did this! You candy crushed my hopes and dreams. All right, next up is a game I played a good amount of, and in hindsight, I'm now thinking to myself, why did I play this game so much? Super Mario Run. Dear Mario, why don't you join us at the castle for a party? Well, I don't know, princess. Usually you offer some cake or something. I'll bake a cake! Oh, I'll be right over! <laughs> I'll be taking that cake. And Peach, too. I love how the cake takes priority. It's like, yeah, you can steal the princess all you want, but if you dare lay a finger on my cake, I'll rip you to shreds! The game is an auto-runner, which means Mario automatically runs. Oh, it makes so much sense now. Yeah, Mario runs and all you gotta do is tap the screen to make him jump. It's pretty challenging, timing your jumps to avoid enemies, collect coins, and getting the best, highest score. There's some pretty good replay value, considering if you're a completionist, you're bound to not get all the collectibles and challenges your first time around. The game was made by, who else, but Shigeru Miyamoto, which explains its high quality. The game uses assets from New Super Mario Bros, making the game feel like an actual game, and not like some low-budget, low-effort mobile game that a lot of other companies and game series tend to have. This one looks, and sounds, like a Mario game. There's also some interesting facts when it comes to the development of this game. Originally, the concept of this game stemmed from an unused idea for a Mario game on the Wii. This was before even New Super Mario Bros. Wii, where the player would need to jump to the beat of the music, essentially being a rhythm-based platformer. Nintendo was also inspired, weirdly enough, by speedrunners. Yeah, according to Miyamoto, they'd noticed how speedrunners would always be moving forward and would never stop, essentially turning any Mario game into an auto-runner. So Miyamoto wanted to make it so that all players would get to feel that experience. Which I gotta say, is a really awesome feeling! I've played level 1 of Super Mario World a million times, so I could just speed run through it and impress my friends every time. Super Mario Run is a really perfect installment of a Nintendo mobile game. They're always adding updates and special events, new courses, characters, etc. There's always a reason to come back to this great game. Mainly, the cake. 
Now, going from a game that I played a lot of, here are a few that I rarely touched. Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. I'm not too sure why I didn't play this game a lot. I just didn't. Not because it's bad, far from it. Pocket Camp is essentially a full-fledged Animal Crossing game, just on a smaller scale. You create your villager, and instead of living in a big town, you instead make this campsite your temporary home. And then you do Animal Crossing things. Pick fruit, make materials, design and decorate your campsite. Like I said, the game is just Animal Crossing on your phone. The main issue I've heard from players though, especially Animal Crossing fans, is that there's not much to really do. Everything is cut down from the amount of decorations and items you can make, which in turn doesn't really give the game much replay value. So I've heard! Again, I personally haven't given this game too much of my attention. There are the dreaded microtransactions in which you can pay real life money to essentially speed up the process of the game. No thank you! Although there is Isabel, so, you know, 10 out of 10. I won't let any harm come to either of you. There is still a way. Ah! Dragalia Lost is another mobile game that I've played for probably, like, 20 minutes? Maybe? But what I played, I did enjoy. RPGs are always kind of difficult to nail on your phone. The Tale series is my favorite game series, and even their mobile games, I find it hard to stay invested in. Regardless, Dragalia Lost is still a really enjoyable time. It's an action RPG, so there's not a lot of menus and reading to navigate through. It's got a gorgeous art style, cool music... Yeah, if you're someone who enjoys RPGs while being on the toilet, then while you are a unique breed of people, Dragalia Lost will definitely fill that need. Mario Kart Tour! This is the most whatever Mario Kart game I've ever played. Now, you might just think that Mario Kart Tour is simply Mario Kart, but on your phone. And while it is kinda that, it's also kinda not that fun. Your kart automatically moves forward, similar to Super Mario Run. It just goes. Alright, so that's one mechanic out of two down. Steering! It feels weird. Like you're trying to turn on Planet Molasses while your cart is covered in Coombs Family Farm organic maple syrup. So in other words, tasty, but not functional. The game just feels like a bad port, which is a shame because it's really... not. Everything just feels off, but what other choice do you have if you want to play a Mario Kart game on the go? Oh yeah. That's right. Also, the game has loads of expensive microtransactions that you know I'm not spending a single nickel on. Which is really ridiculous. I mean, come on, $40 for Diddy Kong? DLC characters in Super Actual Smash Brothers only cost $6. But hey, if you really want to play Mario Kart on the go and don't have a Switch, then fine. Mario Kart Tour technically gets the job done. But where's Luigi? Well, according to Nintendo, Luigi couldn't initially make it to the race because he lost his keys. Who else but Luigi? You guys remember Pokemon Go? Yeah, you probably do. There have been a few Pokemon mobile games released throughout the years. Magikarp Jump was definitely one of them. A game in which you train Magikarps to jump. I mean... The game looked cute, I'll give it that. Yeah, I didn't like this game personally. It was a little too... Why is this a thing for my tastes? Then there was Pokemon Shuffle. Essentially Candy Crush, but with a Pokemon skin. This is the route of mobile games I'm never a fan of. Just taking a really popular title and concept and changing the aesthetics a bit. It's like, I'm surprised Nintendo also didn't make a Kirby-themed Angry Birds game. Like, come on, Nintendo, you're better than that! The game's still pretty good though, honestly. But then, there was the gold mine, known as Pokemon Go. A while ago, Google launched a tiny game where you could open up Google Maps and travel the world looking for Pokemon. It was somewhat of a test to gauge the public interest in a real life Pokemon game. Fast forward to 2016, and Niantic would launch the ever so popular Pokemon Go. I mean, 
what can I really say about this game? It was truly a phenomenon coming very close to the Pokemon craze of the 90s. Everyone was playing Pokemon Go. Kids, teenagers, young adults, parents, even some grandparents people who were fans of Pokemon, and even people who didn't care that much about Pokemon but just wanted to go along with the craze. So, I don't think I really need to explain what this game is, but here's a quick rundown. You create your trainer, join either Team Valor, Mystic, or Instinct. I personally chose Team Mystic because all of my friends chose Valor and I wanted to be different! And then you have to actually go outside and find Pokemon. Yeah, go to parks, downtown, or heck, just go around the neighborhood and see what'll spawn. It was a great motivator to actually go outside and get some exercise. As opposed to the Wii just telling me to take a break. How about I don't do that, Wii? I'll admit though, I am one of those people that just played Pokemon Go for a few months after its release, while the game was really popular. I haven't touched it in years. Apparently, there's so many new features, like new generations of Pokemon, raids, I don't know what's going on. I'm a filthy Pokemon Go Gen 1-er. But regardless, that doesn't change the memories I created in those few months. Getting together with my friends, heading downtown, simply to spend hours walking and finding new Pokemon to catch, and even running into random people we've never met before. Immediately connecting with them over our shared excitement of the Pokemon in the area. It was so surreal. I'm usually someone who hates talking to strangers about anything. Just leave me alone and don't look at me. But this game was able to change that mindset of mine, even if just for a bit. The game itself is simple. Tap on Pokemon and throw your Pokeballs at it to catch them. You can also find, take over, and power up gyms. The battles are really basic. Just tap the screen like a madman. Pokemon Go is still going incredibly strong today, and while I personally may not be playing it anymore, the impact it's had on so many people and the world even is definitely a force to be reckoned with.